Hi, and welcome to this test video. I'm Feed the Master Inquiry Ornison, and I'm going to look at my last game from the Icelandic League. Uh, I've already looked at two games from uh, this weekend, and we're going to look at the third one. And I'm just going to show you how I uh, what I do after I play my game. So uh, here we have the score sheet. That's my name, Inquiry Ornison, Jónesson, and my opponent, Sigurd Sjöfusson. This was played on the 2nd of March, round 8, board 8. This is the matchup, TR against Higgin. And the opening moves, uh, the London. And as you can see, after every move, I uh, notate the time. But I'm not going to uh, enter it into my chest space. And let's have a look at our normal environment and enter the game. Okay, so here we are, and I've fired up uh, a blank board in chess space, so I'm going to now uh, enter the game from the score sheet. Usually I do this right after the tournament, but uh, yeah, I've been enjoying some rest after uh, the stressful weekend. So I had the white pieces, and so I'm not looking at it yet with a computer. I'm first going to enter the game and maybe give you my thoughts. Knight to f3, and my opponent played the king's Indian. Actually, I thought for two minutes on my first move. We played, uh, we played plenty of games before. Actually, I have one <laughs> very uh, exciting game that I now remember on my channel against the same opponent. Also played in the Icelandic League. Uh, yeah, one of the more exciting games I've played ever, and yeah, I'll put a link to that and encourage you to check it out. Very exciting game. So we have some history. And I thought about if I should play d4 or c4, kind of expecting what it would do, and in the end I decided to play uh, the London system, bishop to f4. I was expecting uh, a different line than he played, uh, from what he played, to be honest though. So e3 now, uh, he castled, and I played h3. Bishop e2 is slightly more common, and I believe considered slightly more accurate as uh, h3 isn't necessary yet and it's better to be castled early against some early c5 lines but i thought he would play lines with b6 and in that case i sometimes like my bishop on d3 so i wanted to see what he did so h3 but he played d6 so he hasn't really uh, revealed his hand he's playing a king's indian setup and here i have to uh, select a move and bishop b2 is the most common move i went with that and here he surprised me, he played c6. And when he did that, I was expecting him to go for this usual uh, King Cynthia type of setup with uh, knight here, and maybe queen here, and e5, and maybe e4. I'll put my bishop on h2, and I'm quite happy with these positions for white. So I was happy to see that. And I castled, did take five minutes, but for some reason I didn't really um, think about the move that he made. In this position, the uh, most common move by far is knight b to d7, but he did play b5, which surprised me uh, a little bit, and I thought here for 11 minutes, which is, well, that's too much when you have only have 90 minutes for the game, but I wasn't quite sure how to proceed here. We thought after the game, maybe I should already start nibbling at the pawns with maybe a4, even c4. Probably a4, but uh, I kind of couldn't uh, figure out what I wanted to do. And this move is usually useful because when he plays e5, I have to play it anyway, so it's kind of uh, yeah prophylactic move in a way. So I just wanted to see what where he was going with this. Uh, he played bishop to b7, and here I kind of decided instead of attacking. Uh, this pawn here with, with a4, I decided to go for action in the center with knight b to d2. And since he's not yet ready with e5, especially at the knight here, I decided to go for uh, action in the center and I play e4. So this would probably be less desirable if he could play e5 himself now, but maybe he can uh, with some tactics on e4, but I didn't think it was uh, a feasible option for him. And now I'm ready to play e5. So I thought this was maybe a little bit of, of something for me. But uh, he preventively 
back away from the attack just as I did with knight to e8. Now he's ready to play e5, so I think I have to play e5 myself. That's what I did. He took, uh, I took back with the pawn. I did think a bit for seven minutes. And I was taking too much time in the opening, and at this stage I'm already uh, 20 minutes down on the clock. Now, uh, I have some ideas of playing e6, maybe not immediately, but my opponent didn't want to allow that, and he played knight c7. It's also a natural blockading square for the knight. And here again, I thought for a long time, 13 minutes. And wasn't sure really where to go, what to do. Uh, I decided on knight to b3. Seems to me like there's one game that uh, has seen that move. Um, yeah, I was thinking also about c4, but I thought this was clever because I'm threatening to go here. And I did, uh, yeah, I thought he would play a5 or knight e6. In the game, he went a5. Uh, but if knight e6. Yeah, yeah, the, then I can uh, think about knight a5. That was the uh, one of the ideas. I can also um, play knight d4 or uh, or go c4. c4 was one of, one of my ideas as well. But knight a5, queen takes a5, this hangs, is also an idea. But I did play a5. Uh, here I thought I was getting an edge because uh, I played queen d2. And this, okay, connects my rook, so I'm ready to put something on, on d1. And I'm also attacking the pawn. Um, he played knight e6, protecting the pawn. And now rook fd1. And he has to move this knight. And I thought he didn't have a nice square for the knight. He went here. I thought if he went here, I would play queen e3. I'm attacking his queen with my rook, so he has to go here. And I thought I had a little something, something. Uh, I mean, I have some space advantage because of this pawn. And I thought uh, the pin could be a little bit annoying. I didn't see immediately how to exploit it. But it felt like there should be something here. First idea I looked at was knight g5, but he does have uh, h6 there, so that's not a feasible option. I thought this was, uh, okay, I was ready to play this, I didn't look any further really. But he played knight b6, and, uh, and just as he played it, he kind of let out a little chuckle like, you know, <laughs> like he was unhappy with something. And I just thought it was because... Uh, he thought he was getting a worse position, and I played the move I was attending uh, pretty quickly, almost Im immediately. Uh, but I probably had a better move, which I missed. So why to move? What would you play here? It might be a natural move, it might be a tactic, I'm not giving you any hints. So okay, assuming you paused and uh, thought about it. In the game, I played queen e1, which I thought was uh, pretty nice, forcing him to play knight d5, because otherwise I'd take the pawn. And then I play c4. This is what happened in the game, knight d5 and c4. And I thought this was giving me uh, an edge. I did, however, uh, have, a game, have a move that I did not consider during the game. But if I uh, had followed my own advice on the forcing moves, once again, a link to that video. I think it's uh, an excellent way to improve your thinking. And if I had taken my own advice, I would have looked at this and found it as a candidate move. But uh, being down on the clock, uh, 33 minutes, I decided to play my move immediately. So I missed the move queen takes a5. Didn't really consider it as a candidate move. And this was a, wins a pawn because if he takes, I take here. And the bad news is that once I take on a5, his bishop has to retreat to a miserable square on a8, and white will be up a pawn. Probably a winning ending, because I can easily make a pass pawn on the a-file, eventually. Um, other moves, uh, this doesn't really really help, it just puts my rook on uh, an open file. You have to take the queen, and knight takes, and you again have the problem with the bishop. He might have gotten some counterplay, and this I did check on my phone after the game. Uh, 
that he can play queen c7 here, and it's actually not super clear. But like during the game, this this felt. Uh, I mean, after the game, it felt like uh, queen takes a5 should have been a good move here. But he gets some counterplay because of uh, knight a4 and knight c4, and my uh, sorry, my b2 pawn being a little bit vulnerable. But he did not go for this. Well, I did not go for this, so uh, we didn't have to find out what would have happened. So, okay, I played queen to e1, uh, knight d5, and I played this c4 move. I'm breaking up his pawns. Uh, he has to take, and bishop takes. And I thought the key here was uh, once I take on d5, uh, which happened after queen to b6. I took on d5, c takes d5, and I'm getting a very nice... Uh, knight here on the d4 square which cannot be uh, dislodged so uh, if i'm to move i will just take on e6 and put the other knight on d4 so he took on d4 uh maybe he should have played knight c5 ah uh, no no it doesn't matter knight g uh, yeah. actually i thought maybe during the game that knight c5 was uh, perhaps a better move avoiding the exchange because uh, there's this concept by Dvoretsky called the superfluous knight where both knights want to enter the same square so avoiding the trade of one of them makes the other one uh, a bit silly and now maybe he's threatening here and well he's never really threatening to take the pawn because of uh, rook b1 takes b7 but you know at least it would in uh, inconvenience my knight so I was more worried about knight g5 but he took on d4 and I was quite happy with that Main line, knight takes d4. He played rook after c8. Uh, I decided just to uh, improve my queen, protect the knight, protect b2. Played a4. And I went for the rook trade. Uh, I'm down to 50 minutes versus my opponent's 37. So I was quite happy that he uh, went for the rook trade. I thought I had uh, a slight edge here. Uh, because he does have the bishop pair, but I have this beautiful knight. He played bishop d7, his bishop was attacked. Uh, I decided to make loose for my king and also prepared to uh, be able to play f4 and bring my bishop into the game. And he played e6. I was uh, expecting f6, but he played e6. Um, I played f4 and after f6 with 29 minutes left to my 8 he did offer me a draw and I thought about it for a while and in the end especially with my time situation because I will never get more time than the 30 seconds per move and I thought down to like two three minutes and even though I'm positionally better and I'm, I'm not risking much I didn't really see any any clear plan to uh, to improve my position and if I try to win at some stage I would have to take risks and with my time being this low uh, it could be risky so with this being a team competition I decided against uh, playing on but if I had played on uh, let's see uh, enter variation no I go here and enter variation so this is just for my chest space so it's a variation because the game ends here so if f6 I was thinking if, if I played on, probably this. He takes, I take. He does have some weaknesses around his uh, king, but something like this. And even though my, uh, nice is pretty, my, nice, my knight is pretty nice, he can't play these moves just to bother my queen and my knight. And I always have to keep an eye on this. I can at some stage play b3, get this pass pawn, but where is it going? It's very hard to get it going. Um, I mean, if I swing my pieces over, then maybe I have to think about this. And I would think the computer will say white is better, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, I'm not sure, but I um, wasn't sure how to continue. Yeah, I forgot to say my opponent, he's also a, a feeder master. He was 23.70 already at 8.17, so he was... Uh, a pretty promising player uh, of a generation in Iceland that was pretty strong, which produced a European uh, youth champion and the world youth champion. He was born in the same year as those guys, so he had great competition. 
Um, but perhaps not, you know, he's not playing uh, as much as he used to. Uh, more, yeah, more or less like me, just playing in leagues and, and stuff like that and uh, blitz tournaments. So he's currently rated like uh, mid 2200s. So I didn't want to risk it. And yeah, I was thinking if I was playing a weaker opponent, perhaps I would have. Uh, but that's a different story. And if we should be playing different against different opponents, I think we should. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a different discussion. So anyway, uh, this was uh, agreed drawn. And, you know, having won the other two games and increasing my rating a bit, I was happy to uh, end on a good note and watch the, the final round of the weekend where, where I had the day off. Uh, so yeah, that was my game from the Icelandic League. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.